Hello people, and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines Modular Builds. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Welcome to our first Airports DLC build. Uh, there is going to be a few of these covering various different styles of airport. However, today we're going to get started out with a nice, simple and easy single runway, single terminal build that can be used to help get you used to the functionality of the new Airports DLC, how everything interacts with each other, and also give you a really nice waterfront and highway side airport build that can be used to bring Sims in and out of the city. We'll also run over some initial detailing and decoration palettes that can be used in these airport areas. Otherwise, let's build an airport, shall we? Okay guys, so I'm going to place this uh, near to a highway and near to a water source. Uh, just because of what I'm going to do with the runway, we're going to terraform the runway out into the water today. But that's not an integral design choice, it's purely aesthetic. So near a highway is going to be sensible, because these things love highway access. Uh, we're going to come in with a dirt road first of all with all our snapping on. I'm going to draw out from the highway by 20 tiles. This now allows us to come in and grab our airport. I'm going to run with the classic terminal here. Again, kind of running nice and simple, right? And this will snap onto the end of that dirt road. A nice 90 degree angle. So we can place that there. And that's going to give us our main terminal building that looks out over the highway. And we can now trim off the dirt road as well. Of course, you now want to go ahead and paint out your uh, airport area. I would advise that you naturally terraform the land that goes into the water purely because the airport terraforming tool isn't that great at terraforming in water. You get some bobbly edges, looks a little bit weird. So I'll terraform that myself. I'm going to come back in and grab the concourse. Turn off your road guideline here because the highway will mess with it. And we're going to come out by 10 units on each side, which of course is to that first blue marker right here. Then I'll come back into road guideline with a dirt road, because we're going to be doing uh, some snapping here. We're going to come out by five and then let go. And then we're going to come up by five and then draw. Then we're going to draw another road here. And then we're going to draw down by another five again and then come back. And then we can break this middle road now. Draw one more up here so we get the road guideline on this spot. So once you have your road guidelines configured as such, you can snap into the grid here in the road guideline. This is going to really help you. We're going to come down onto this snap point here, so kind of the bottom two left grids, uh, in line with this road guideline as well, so we're remaining five units from this. We're going to click here, and then we're going to draw up by 30 units. All right. So what you're looking for here is a draw distance of 540. So you can see here the distance is 540. You want to make sure that you're repeating that same distance on this side, so you can see it's 540 again. And then come out by another 10 units which will leave you with a configuration that looks a little bit something like this. You can now trim off those dirt road guidelines, come into your freeform tool, and then we're just going to hook the concourse into itself, which will give us a nice little bend in the concourse, which is something I've found is actually quite nice to do, because once you start running these concourse blocks in very large rows, it can become almost too much of a flat edge. So introduce a little bit of curvature into them. And it could just help break up those very long uh, straight pieces. All right. You're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side now. So this is mimicked on either side. So now this is going to give you an airport that looks a little bit like this. Okay, got some nice curves in those main concourse runs and a nice little design. So in terms of your aircraft stands, I want to run uh, with medium aircraft stands. I'm going to place them as close to the concourse as we can get them here. You'll just get a feel of how they snap in and then just place them after the other. I want to go for four. Okay, have something that looks like that. You can repeat this again on the other side. Of course, if you want to use the large aircraft stands, you can use them on the outside ones, or indeed uh, all through the middle, you just have fewer or less, depending which size you go for. But like I said, I'm just going to run four medium aircraft stands. And like I said, I'm going to run the same patterns on this side as well. Staying as close to those snap points as you can. Again, you just get a feel for it as you kind of get used to the DLC here today. And this will give you uh, 16 aircraft stands. I've just gone for all medium just for the kind of consistent look. But of course, this is entirely customizable as to which size of aircraft stand uh, you want in here. So customize it to your own liking. Now from the end of either the left or the right 
uh, central taxiways here. I'm going to come up with my dirt road guideline again. I'm going to come up by a distance of 30 tiles, which will snap to that guideline. And then we can draw in here because we want this to be uh, where our runway is going to sit. Okay. So I mentioned that we should terraform this ourselves. Uh, I'll kind of show you what happens if you terraform in water with the uh, airport area tool. I draw it out here. You see how you get these kind of knobbly bits along the edge. It's not the best at kind of terraforming into water. So that's why I'm going to do it myself, just using level terrain. Uh, make sure you grab the same height as your airport. And then it's just a case of now lining this up to sit out in the water. Cut it out a lot bigger than you need it. We'll of course refine this today. So if you want to, from your initial dirt road guideline, uh, you can actually kind of draw uh, your dirt roads out here and use uh, these guys for terraforming. Uh, you will of course need to let the game play uh, so the game can read your uh, newly terraformed land and let the water resettle. So we'll wait for this to happen. So like I was talking about, you can use uh, your dirt roads here um, as guidelines to terraform against, which can be quite helpful. So if you want to just kind of uh, draw these out. And again, I know I'm going to need uh, a fair bit more land mass here. So I'm going to carry on uh, pushing out with level terrain. This build will look horrifically ugly before it even starts to look good today. So <laughs> just bear with it. All right, just bear with it. So I'm going to go for a width of about 20 tiles with my dirt road frames and then just bring this back down, which will hook straight into that road guideline. And now we've got a frame uh, to terraform our kind of waterfront runway off. Okay. So next thing you want to do is of course paint out your airport area um, because now we have our new roads in, which is great. So this is just so we can place our runway, of course. Just don't worry about the flooding. It'll calm down eventually. Okay. So now with the runway, all of these road guidelines with the dirt roads are perfectly parallel with the concourses and the taxiways, which is fine. So now you just want to find a place uh, to draw this in. Um, of course, everyone's distance here might be a little bit different depending on the size of your map. I want to go for a 90 tile runway. Okay, this is a relatively small airport complex, only a single terminal. So I'm going to run with that. So once you have your runway in, you can now come in with your taxiways and start to feed people uh, into the airport. Uh, seven units of space between runway and taxiway is a pretty sensible kind of medium to aim for. You can go further if you want. You can go for 10. Just leaves a little more distance. It's really entirely up to you. Uh, but I want to go uh, for seven units here. All right. And then we're going to bring it down by 10. And then start feeding into all uh, of these aircraft stands over here. Of course, using a 90 degree angle. And we can bring this one up and then down and behind. And you're kind of seeing how this works now, right? If you do get this happening, because the nodes can be a little bit finicky on the taxiways, just delete the one you're trying to snap to and then come back to its road guideline. And then it just lets you draw it in a little easier. So if you get in that area where it's like we can't connect, then just do that. And now it's just a case of feeding everyone through a one-way loop and back into the runway over here. Google Earth is massive uh, for this sort of inspiration. If that's what you're wanting to do, you can start matching everything up here now. Bring this one down to this road guideline as well. And again, hooking it in these aircraft stands. I'm going to leave that distance of seven units again to come back through this way. All right. And then this can now come back down into the runway. We can remove our initial holding frames. If you're not getting the guideline, just bring it out a little bit further. There you go. Now you know your parallel. Then you can hook everyone in. So this is a really basic, simple kind of runway taxiway configuration for you to get used to, to kind of learn the airport's DLC. It's all about just working with one-way flow systems. Okay. You know, they have to get off the runway and then into the taxi stands. We can bring this one across here as well. We can also probably bring this one back up into the main road too. So there's a whole different configuration and um, you can put these out in. Okay. It's all just about following the one way system. Of course, if you have more than one runway, then you need to allow for multiple one way systems to come in. But I'm relatively happy with this. We can already see our planes coming and going and everyone's going to have a nice time. So that's the bulk of your airport infrastructure in. You can now start including kind of airport lounges here if you want. And there's room for a couple on the back of the main terminal building. You can squeeze some in here. 
Uh, don't be afraid to start introducing uh, hangers into certain areas if you want. You know, you can start playing with, probably not here in the open courtyard. Um, but now the, the modular build becomes very flexible um, to kind of what you do and don't like, really. You can, you know, start to squeeze your refueling stations in here if you like. There's plenty of opportunity for this. Um, of course, surround the entire thing um, with airplane fence, which is the brand new favourite fence, of course. And um, you can kind of just come off all your snapping with these because there's so many road guidelines in these places. Uh, probably angle snap might be nice as we come around the corner and then just keep everyone uh, penned in, right? So, of course, you'll get used to your new fence, which is great, right? Love the new fence. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, so I do want to key up uh, the runway now. So I'm going to use the content creator keys. However, of course, the regular water keys will work absolutely fine here. And um, you can just use these ones. Uh, just make sure you're snapping to a road guideline and staying um, parallel with the runway. Again, it's up to you which one you want to use. I just like the content creator keys. So I'm going to go for the uh, simple fenceless one. Road length is also helpful here as well. If you want to make sure that your keys are perfectly symmetrical either side of the runway, you can click and drag with your road guideline to find out that this one here is a distance of 17 units, or 340 in cost. Uh, and then you can just repeat that on this side, right? That's the 340 point there. That's where it's going to be parallel. So we can do that if we want. And again, just terraform against it. So you read your shoreline. Again, this whole terraformed waterfront runway thing is purely an aesthetic choice. You don't have to do this. So if you're not running this as part of your modular airport, then just don't worry about it. And once you have all your mainframes in, you can now just use your curve tool to curve these off. It might give you a little bit of grief saying it's too short if that happens. And just shorten off one of the ends and then you should be okay. Yeah, there you go. And then, of course, this is where, again, everyone's map will differ. You can now continue to bring the key around the resorting waterfront. If you have it, you don't have to. Keep it going for as long or as short as you want. But very much what you're looking for um, is this kind of waterfront tiered out runway. Okay. You can go shorter, you can go narrower, you can go wider. All open to your own interpretation. And then you want to come into your slope terrain as well and just make sure you get rid of all the dirt off of the side of the keys. Um, otherwise it will really affect the way the build looks. So that's going to give you a little uh, waterfront uh, paired runway essentially, okay? Very nice. Some nice designs we can put together here today. So of course as your game is playing, you're going to start seeing your uh, medium planes arrive. Which is very cool, right? Huge fan of this DLC, I hope you're all enjoying it. It really is, uh, really is fun. If you want to position some assets on the opposite side of your runway here, um, then you can. I'd recommend you do it on taxiways, it just looks a little more realistic. And um, there is one thing you want to make sure you do though, is don't have the one-way taxiways facing into this end of the runway, because they will arrive here and then immediately take off. It's hilarious, but it looks ridiculous, <laughs> so just don't do it. Always have the one-way roads coming off the runway at the end of the runway, okay? Vice versa here too. So, we can bring this again by 7, so we're maintaining that symmetry. And again, I can bring it back into here. I can now also start to extend uh, my taxiway system uh, over here if you want, again, which gives you uh, plenty more opportunity to start playing with hangars and refueling stations. At various different bits and pieces and um, you can even break your one-way system if you want again we'll just kind of talk about some detail in here and um, bring it in here so you can break your one-way system and then start to position kind of these small little plane props around if you're trying to find an excuse to use them you can bring them off the edge of a concourse like that okay so it's not a too bad a way of using them i would definitely recommend for those pc players use surface painter for airports because otherwise you're gonna get a lot of this can, of course, if you're on the consoles or totally vanilla, then you can use the poor man's surface painter and um, just by repeating a uh, vanilla pavement path. It is a little bit grim, but it fills out the concrete texture for you without using the surface painter mod. So there's a small work around there if you like, but it's not going to be for everyone. So everyone's going to have different detailing palettes here. Um, and it also depends, you know, because these are all... Uh, contributing to airport attractiveness and um, if you don't want your airport going up to level three and 
doing all those sorts of different things, then you might not want to be doing this. It really is, again, just entirely up to you, everyone's preference and city. It is going to be different. Start playing with different layouts here, maybe squeeze in one of those smaller hangers as well. Okay, so it's now just about fleshing it out, doing different things with it. You can also drop in the air control tower over on the left side of your terminals if you want. It's kind of annoying that these things have to be snapped onto a concourse. Um, what can also be nice is to bring this concourse out kind of parallel with the fence and the water and then drop your air control tower over there. I'll have a little kind of play with this, all right, so we can kind of follow uh, the shape and design of that airport fence. Make sure we paint out our area up here first as well. Okay, and then that airport fence will just uh, get deleted. You can kind of bring out a little bit of concourse here. And then place your air control tower on the side. Again, it's up to you. I'm quite happy with it here. But if you want it kind of near the runway, near the water, then you can extend your concourse out. Again, everyone's preference is going to be slightly different. So now we'll have a chat about the front of the airport. Um, I mentioned at the start of today's episode that highway access is very important for these, also public transport. And they do draw a fair amount of people, so making sure that they can get away from the city is important. I'm going to use a one-way industrial road for the main entrance. If you have the industries DLC, the reason why is because these little yellow bollards along the road uh, with the industry road work really nicely uh, as part of a kind of terminal build, if you like. So uh, I'm going to run with those ones. Of course, any one way road here will be fine. You can run with highway roads if you want. And then bring these out kind of 20 on each side, all right? Then I'm going to grab my two way industry road, I'm going to come out by four units to meet up with the uh, front of the terminal buildings. They're going to come down by 6, I'm going to come across by 13, and then back up to the top. So because the tiles outside of the main terminal building aren't uh, an even number, you're not going to get a perfect 2x2 two two Green Cities car park in here. However, what you can do is go for the 3x2 ones, leaving a space either side of them. So it has to look like this. Okay, so you can do that. And then come into your pathways and fill out with a walkable path where the spaces won't occupy with parking. It does take a while to come in, but once you have a 3x2 repeated pattern in, you'll have something that looks a little bit like this. So you're going to get the little verandas uh, over the car park here. Kind of works nicer with the airport, right? Again, you can repeat this pattern um, as many times and as many places as you want. Car parking is a really key aesthetic of an airport. And whilst the vanilla car parking with the green cities is a little bit rudimentary, it's still important to include, I think. I'm going to come into public transport again and grab a taxi stand, uh, place a couple of these directly outside of the airport, okay? It's going to be a really nice aesthetic for you. And then with the front of the terminal now, um, it's really kind of up to you as to what you want to construct out the front. You can carry on with your industry roads if you'd like. You can maybe bring in kind of the regular road or one of the grassy ones. And then off the back of these, you can now start placing in uh, kind of your hotels. I would probably stay away from the luxury airport hotel for this one and um, because we're going with quite a small terminal quite small airport here this is a little bit too much for it i think so i'll probably stick with the budget um hotels for right now again you can leave a space in between for walkability but having them face onto the highway again is quite a nice aesthetic okay it's going to start really building up at the front of your terminal building uh, likewise, I would also include uh, the unique building here as well, uh, the Aviation Museum, I think it's called, is it? Yes, this one here. Uh, you can place this here if you take one of them out. Um, again, saving those 20 tiles between the highway and the terminal at the start is going to help us. Because you can now position um, your planes right up against kind of a main road, which is really going to kind of hammer home the airport vibes, right? So if you want to include this one in here, then of course you can. Everyone's preference will be different. I would also let your entry and exit road um, hug this airport fence because it's going to give you a really nice drive-by as your sims enter the airport. Okay, they're going to be driving past the stands. They'll see the control towers, kind of planes landing and taking off. So you're going to be getting some kind of aesthetic choices coming into play here as well. Okay, and then you can then feed this uh, off and out if you want. Okay, of course, making sure that you maintain a direction of flow. This can be two-way if you want, or you can let people exit out this side. You know, kind of everyone's highway configuration and road network out the front here is going to be different just depending where you place it. 
But uh, there's some kind of initial ideas here that you can get involved with, okay, for kind of making this thing look good. And let's definitely have a chat about some of the new content creator tree decoration. Uh, I'm feeling quite a tropical vibe here. So I want to go for maybe some of the new coconut trees out front. That's going to be quite nice, isn't it? Get a few in there, maybe some of the small little kind of flowery ones up at the top as well with some long grass knocking about. So lots more potential green belt options now as we begin to introduce all this new content into our cities. So plenty of ideas and kind of themes to be had, right? So there is one more little detailing uh, point that I want to kind of cover here uh, before we kind of wrap this thing up and move into some cinematics. Um, without surface paint, I mentioned with the planes here, as you paste them, you're getting a lot of open green space, which does happen, but there's also a lot of concrete as well. Uh, you can come in with your pavement pathways. So this is a classic bit of uh, Imperator Spice from his previous airport modded builds. Uh, and just draw them uh, between the uh, two networks here and keep them on an angle snap as well. And then just run them between each of your taxiways. You can use dirt for this if you want, but it just helps kind of flesh out a lot of these empty dead spaces that you're going to have between taxiways, runways, decoration assets, etc. So it can be a nice way of just filling out some space, stick to very rigid 90 degree angles, and uh, you'll, you'll definitely notice a difference, all right? If you do want to include some of the public transport that comes with the new DLC, then you can extend either side of your concourses. Again, everyone's city is going to be different here as to what lies either side. Um, using your road length, this is now a good point where you can snap on either your bus, train, or metro stations. Again, everyone's public transport is going to be different. Uh, you can go with a train station here. You can have this pegged into one side of the concourse. Okay, and then you can also bring uh, your one-way road network around the back of this as well. Slight curve like that, and then you can bring it parallel uh, with your rail station. Uh, you can come off of all your road guidelines here, because there is actually kind of texture and doors, so if you want to factor that into your design, then you, you can just eye it up and get that sweet spot as close as possible. It does make the kind of back end of the train station a little more appropriate if you like, if you have a road through here. It's not functional, people won't come in and out, but we can pretend, right? So you can hook in some public transport like this, I'm just going to use trains. But this could easily be buses or metro, again, everyone's city and kind of orientation of what sits around the airport is going to be slightly different. But I'm going to go ahead and get this detailed up, carry on bringing in my coconut uh, palm or coconut tree patterns uh, in and around the terminal and uh, get this thing hooked into the highway at either end so people can come and go from it. And also uh, connect a train line in here as well. And then we'll see what it looks like once it's detailed up. Uh, one quick note I've forgotten to mention uh, during our detailing session actually is the inclusion uh, of Nightlife from the After Dark DLC uh, alongside an airport. It works quite nicely. Again, there's a variety of different places uh, that you can fit this in. You can also squeeze in a new district over here as well. Just be careful you don't break your green city's uh, zone ins, otherwise you'll lose your car parks. Uh, give this the leisure specialization. Uh, also tourism will work quite nicely here as well and uh, just zone it up and let it grow. Uh, it pairs really nicely with the airports. Okay guys, that is going to do it for our first airport modular build. Um, really lots to get to grips with in this new content drop and the airports are so varied. Definitely the most amount of variation I think we've ever had in a DLC. Uh, definitely more than industries and part life. So many different shapes and sizes and terminal styles we can use here and of course we'll have many more airport modular builds including kind of a massive international multi-terminal build uh, which is a little way away yet I need to practice that one uh, but this build here it's a single terminal single runway really nice easy simple build to do you'll bring in a ton of people with this build and it also gets you to grips with how the dlc works with taxiways and runways and exploring some new uh, decoration palettes uh, using our new uh, trees that we've got as well do hang around for the outro tags, there was some detail you guys wouldn't have seen. And of course, just check out this thing in motion now it's together. Otherwise, I want to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.